Would you like to have a USB key for the good old Commodore 64? If you have a battery back RAM cartridge, you can do it. Mine's from Jason Ranheim. I put up 128k EEPROM in the first slot and three RAM chips in the other slots. Configure it appropriately so that it accepts the RAM chip in the second slot. It defaults to an EEPROM in the second slot. You should be able to do this with any battery back RAM cartridge there. Now if we put it into the 64 Write a basic file. Uh, set the border color to white. Okay, right. okay now we save that. The border color, color, and my forty seven. Saves it to the USB key. Okay, border color. Uh, new, so it's gone. Load the directory from the 1571 drive. Uh, load directory from the USB key. advantage of that it doesn't use uh, basic memory so for this we've still got the directory of the 1571 drive now we run it uh, no. No. we load the border color again it's 15 bytes not blocks and run it Let's take a closer look at the cartridge now. In the cartridge, I have a 27128, which is a 16K PROM that I've programmed with a menu, a utility program, and the RAM load saver. Uh, we won't look at the utility program now. We'll go back and select the RAM load saver, which puts the load save into memory up the top buffer above CC100 and disables the cartridge so it can no longer be seen. It turns the cartridge out of its address space. I've set the RAM device to be uh, device 47 and if we have a look at it with Micromon which I loaded from the USB key, it's pseudo USB key we can see that we have normal memory now that is just computer memory at location 8000 the cartridge cannot be seen. Location 57343 is DFFF which turns a cartridge in and out. By setting it to 5 we have selected slot 1 that we have set which is the second slot and it is a RAM slot so it had to be awed with 1 if we have a look at that we can see the first RAM chip the I, I use an identifier of GH RAM so I know so I can see so that there is a program in the cartridge we'll protect the cartridge we'll now select the second RAM slot which is slot 3 if we have a look at that we can see there's more programs that are stored in RAM, in the RAM cartridge. Now we load the RAM cartridge.
it just reads from the RAM disk and writes it to the screen. The directory for the disk drive is still actually in basic memory. Okay, let's have a look at the loader program. O330 contains the load vector, O330 and O331, and O332 and O333 contains the save vector. So my loader is at CA04 and the save is at CB04.